Hello everybody and welcome back to the HLTCO YouTube channel. Uh, once again, and I suppose it's really par for the course given the way that I am looking to run this YouTube channel, but once again today I am coming to you with a video about a story that I had no idea was going to be on the agenda when I woke up this morning. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I do the podcast Monday to Friday both on Palace and on general football and between 6am and 7.30am I will write notes for both of those and that's exactly how I I woke up this morning, I quickly scanned Twitter and very quickly found a story relating to an interview that Mike Dean has given with William Hill's Upfront podcast uh, hosted by Simon Jordan. Uh, my views on Simon Jordan, given the fact that he's a previous Crystal Palace chairman and owner, are something that maybe I will explore in a further video, but it's not really the main thrust of why I'm coming to you today. The reason for this video is because Mike Dean, unbelievably, shockingly, ridiculously, has admitted within the actual interview itself that he was the VAR official for a game at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Tottenham where there was a hair pull on Mark Kukurea. A hair pull that he saw, a hair pull that he should have alerted referee Anthony Taylor to, but a hair pull that he didn't alert him to because he had already seen his friend, or mate as he calls him, Anthony Taylor, come in for a fair bit of stick from both coaches. And in his own words, and I am slightly paraphrasing here, I will read out the exact quote verbatim in a minute for you, but in his own words, he didn't want to see him get any more stick than he'd already had that day. This to me is, is mind-blowingly mad. I can't quite believe, to be quite honest with you, that I woke up this morning and alongside millions of other football fans... I have seen quotes from a recently retired referee who is, as far as I'm aware, going to be part of Sky Sports coverage as a, a refereeing expert for this upcoming season, talking openly under his own steam about a decision that he saw that he chose not to alert a referee to on pitch because, in his own words, he didn't want his mate to come in for more stick than he already had had. It, it's... It's beggar's belief. I can't quite understand why, one, he would choose to share that information freely, and two, why he didn't make the call in the first place. Because all it really does to me is reinforce the perspective that many people have across different football clubs, across different fan bases, that the refereeing fraternity do look after one another in far too personal a fashion compared to how the game should be officiated and refereed. And admittedly, it is a drum that I have banged pretty repeatedly over the last year or two, but I think this shines a light on it in the most glaring fashion possible. We simply have to be given, as a football-watching public and from a public consumption perspective for all the clubs involved, free access for pure transparency to the VAR conversations that take place between the VAR officials and the refereeing team on the pitch. Because, I mean, the ramifications of this are quite spectacular. Because, as far as I can see, every single club who have been the subject of a VAR call ever since it was introduced could now realistically assume that VAR officials, fourth officials, referees, are looking after one another in terms of the decision-making process, rather than it being a cut-and-dried, black-and-white decision, yes, there's a hair pull, yes, it needs to be officiated properly. Because, ultimately, Mike Dean has seen his friend, Anthony Taylor, come in for what he feels is too much stick, and he has protected him from it by not sending him to the monitor to make the appropriate call. What I can't quite get my head around in all of this is that his supposed mate, Anthony Taylor, is now being thrown under the bus by Mike Dean in a very high-profile interview that has been picked up by multiple publications. Uh, the article that I saw it featured in was in The Telegraph. I have tweeted about it. Many other people have tweeted about it today. So you're not protecting your mate at all. What you're actually doing is making him complicit all by you know, his own knowledge not being there at the time of that decision taking place in a situation where Mike Dean has willingly not officiated a game properly. And it does have ramifications for Chelsea in that particular instance, because Thomas Tuchel was, of course, still in charge. And you could look at, you know, a flap of a butterfly's wings 
If that red card is given at that particular moment, potentially Chelsea go on and win that game. Potentially Thomas Tuchel stays in charge. The whole Graham Potter era doesn't take place. We don't end up in a situation where Maurizio Pochettino is in charge. And the whole narrative of Chelsea Football Club since that particular fixture could switch. And, you know, maybe that sounds a little bit over the top. But this is a... This is a point that I could make about any football club that has been involved in any VAR call since it became part of the process from a refereeing perspective. Because if you aren't officiating games on a cut and dried basis based on what you see with your own two eyes as a VAR official, then what is the point of the entire thing? I'm not suggesting it has to be completely automated and that you have to take human error out of it altogether, but you cannot have a situation, as far as I'm concerned, where the VAR officials are taking the emotions of their friends, who happen to be the on-pitch referee or fourth official or linesman, into account when deciding whether or not to alert said referee to an infraction on the pitch. It is mad. And I will read the full quote for you now because I think it's it's relevant. And, and this is just one section of the interview, of course. But he said, I missed the stupid hair pull at Chelsea versus Tottenham, which was pathetic from my point of view. It's one of those where if I had my time again, what would I do? I'd send, an, I'd send an Anthony Taylor to the screen. I think I knew if I did send him to the screen, dramatic pulls. He'd cautioned both managers. He'd had a hell of a game. It's been such a tough game end to end. I said to Anthony afterwards, I just didn't want to send you to the screen after what had gone on in the game. I didn't want to send him up because he is a mate as well as a referee. And I think I didn't want to send him up because I didn't want any more grief than he'd already had. Now, I I could not believe that when I read that. And I'm not alone. You know, this isn't, I don't think, me making a storm in a teacup. I think this is a huge, huge story with incredible ramifications moving forward for exactly how this plays out because the PGMOL, Howard Webb, everyone who is involved in the VAR process in the officiating of Premier League games has to be coming under severe scrutiny here because, you know, I have asked and many other people have asked across the last 12 to 18 months for more transparency in terms of the VAR conversations. Now, in this particular instance, you could argue that Mike Dean in his own internal monologue, decided not to even have that conversation via the VAR mics. But if you are in a situation where we can all see the hair pull, therefore we know that Mike Dean has been alerted to said hair pull, and he just ignores it, then it shines a much needed spotlight on the officiating itself. And, you know, you can look at every single game in the Premier League, because there are continuously huge moments, game-changing moments that occur, And how often have we all been there as supporters? You see something happen, you are utterly baffled by the lack of a decision that everyone else watching at home can see with their own two eyes via their TV screen. And, you know, I'm not in the business of wanting referees to be part of a witch hunt. I don't want vilification of individuals. But my perspective on it has always been, if you want a greater degree of respect and empathy and understanding for the decision-making process that VAR officials alongside the on-pitch team go through, then throwing open the doors, lifting the curtain and, and making everyone aware of those conversations is essential to a healthy respect. If it feels like a closed shop, if it feels like people are looking after their mates, and this quote specifically goes to prove that in no uncertain terms, then obviously the conspiracy theories and the assumption that there is some level of, not corruption, I think that's the wrong word, but some level of uh, a decision-making process that isn't fair and just will always take hold. You know, there does need to be transparency. You are talking about a game here that captivates millions upon millions of people across the globe, not just this country, from week to week. You are talking about a game that has millions of pounds at stake for every single position. You are talking about, as I've just mentioned, a football club in Chelsea that could have gone on a completely different path had they gone on to win that game. And and these narratives matter because, ultimately... Referees and VAR officials are put in place to ensure that the rules of the game are upheld to the best of their knowledge or the best of their ability. If you are on your own steam here, making a decision or not making a decision that stops your friend Anthony Taylor from coming in for stick that you don't think he deserves because of the way the game has already panned out, then where is the professionalism in that? What is that if it's not complete and utter... This, it, it, I, I, I'm baffled. I could easily just edit that out, but I think in many ways, you know, that stumble of my words only goes to highlight how confused I am that Mike Dean has 
as I say, under his own steam, completely decided that he can open up to Simon Jordan about that and admit that he chose, completely of his own personal preference, to not make a referee aware of a hair pull. And it is, it's a can of worms, because you don't know how deep this goes. There was that clip a fair few years back now at Anfield, a penalty at the cop end, in which John Moss said to a linesman, did you see anything? And I think, I can't remember the exact wording, but something about that conversation went along the lines of, did you see anything to award or not award the penalty? There was some ambiguity, and John Moss said something along the lines of, I'm going to give the penalty anyway. Now, that is a clip that has gone viral two or three times over the last year or two, because every time there is this conversation about VAR officials and whether or not there should be transparency in the English game, it gets put out there, and quite rightly. But, you know, I've often said, if you've got nothing to hide, put it out there. Make it available. Make it instantly available, like they do in cricket, like they do in rugby. The only reasons you could have for not doing that are twofold. One, there is a degree of bias that takes place or a degree of personal preferences in relation to referees, friends, teams, players, whatever, or it's ranking competence. Either way, both of those situations need and require a spotlight to be shone on them in order for the situation to improve from a general perspective. Because every single week, you get a situation where your Match of the Day hosts, your Sky Sports hosts, whoever's digesting and can consulting about the game week on week, are utterly baffled by the calls that have been made. And there is a lack of accountability, there is a lack of transparency, there's a lack of understanding as to how those decisions have been reached. And this isn't one club or the other, it's a division-wide thing. It needs to be sorted out because, realistically, you could stop a team qualifying for the Champions League, you could stop a team winning a title, you could relegate a team based on this, and you could argue sport, it's entertainment, does it really matter? Yes, it does matter. There are people's jobs at risk here. There are people who work at these football clubs who, if they do get relegated from the Premier League, can be made redundant. That happens routinely when clubs are relegated from the Premier League. There are millions upon millions of pounds and millions upon millions of people that matter when it comes to Premier League games. Uh, and with that in mind, all I think what I and many other people are asking for is a sense of transparency, openness and a collective effort from everybody involved, whether it's referees, coaches, players or fans, to make the product and the decision making process better. And even though Mike Dean as one individual isn't a complete proof of everyone who works within the PGMOL, it is a startling admission to make, particularly when you're not under some form of cross-examination or pressure. To just say it off the bat suggests that they almost feel referees as though they are the true protected species. We all know Mike Dean has a reputation of being a bit of a look-at-me referee, but this is just incredible. And I wanted to speak on it for a few minutes because I'm as baffled as anyone else and I think it needs proper examination and hopefully myself, other people that will take to YouTube, take to social media and make a real song and dance about this will only lead to a situation where Howard Webb and the entire organisation feel the need to actually rework the way that the refereeing system actually functions in this country because I'll be honest, I do not think VAR is fit for purpose as it currently exists. Hopefully you've enjoyed that video. I appreciate it's a bit of a soapbox rant, but I think it's necessary in the circumstances. If you have, please do, please do consider giving this video a like and pushing the subscribe button. It really does help me to grow the channel and make sure that I reach as many people as possible. And other than that, I hope you're having a lovely day and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Cheers.